We do have some cabbage happening. We have some purple or red cabbage over here. I believe it's red cabbage. Um, the leaves are just so pretty and purple. We have two of them. We have a couple of green cabbage which aren't doing super hot. There was more in there. A chicken got in here very early when we put these in and she just kind of tore them up. So unfortunately, we have not reseeded more cabbage yet, which I think because they're a cold weather crop, we could probably still do that and get away with it. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to try, I think, to plant those sometime in the next week because I'd really love to try to make sauerkraut. My husband has done that before and um, we both love sauerkraut. It's really good for gut health. And there's so many people that do it online and that share really cool recipes. And I just, I want to try it. And the cabbage store is super great over the winter. So it's a really great crop to have if you want to have something for long-term term storage over the winter. So I'm going to try to reseed a little bit more here. But we have these four plants that are doing pretty good. I think we'll get a harvest off of those. So, and then also, okay, if you look over here. Okay, so if you look over here, we have... These are rattlesnake beans. So we have grown rattlesnake beans for years. This is our seventh year having a garden. And we have, I think we've had rattlesnake beans in every single one of our gardens. Um, they come up really well. They're really cool to look at. They're great fresh. And if you want to, um, you know, cook them up, saute them, whatever you need to do, uh, you can add them to lots of things. Obviously, they're just like they're a green bean, but they're just, I don't know, they're just so beautiful. And we've always harvested the seeds from them. And we seem to get really great germination rate off of the seeds that we harvest. So they're a good one to have if you want something that you want to harvest the beans for for seed. Um, and again, just they're a versatile plant. And they're beautiful when you trellis them up like this. I mean, they trail really gorgeously. They really weave in and out of the trellis. And they hold on tight and they have big, beautiful foliage. And when these start to flower, they really are super beautiful. So these are, uh, I highly recommend these. We order, so we've always ordered all of our seeds so far from um, Annie's Heirloom Seeds. And they're, I think, based out of Michigan. So similar grow zone to us, which we're in 4A here in Minnesota. Um, so you definitely want to buy seeds that are good in your grow zone. I mean, clearly, um, that's, you're going to have the best rate, germination rate and success with harvest on, uh, if you go that route, so... The sun is super hot. I'm going to turn this around. I can't even see if you can see me. Whew. Okay, so right on the other side of these beans, we have these are all bolting now, but these are butter crunch lettuce. So these had reseeded themselves from last year, and they're bolting at this point, which is really cool to see how the flower is forming in here. And this is where you'll get your seed. So I just, we recently harvested the rest of what we wanted to get from this little batch here. And I just decided they were already starting to like bolt up a little bit to just let them continue doing their thing and go to seed so that we can try to harvest lettuce seeds, which I have not done before. I tried one year with arugula and it was, it did work, but it didn't save them. I don't even know what I had. Honestly, they probably got left on a napkin in the house and they probably got thrown away. So, yeah, so all of these are looking really great. So we're going to try to harvest some butter crunch lettuce seeds this year. So that'll be kind of cool. Okay, now next to those root, those self-seeded butter crunch lettuce, we have our strawberries, which have done amazing this year. They've been so beautiful, and it's been so fun to come out here and get strawberries like every day or every two days. Um, and they do travel. We've just planted six plants in here last year. This is a four by eight foot box. And this year we're already getting some of the runners coming off. So if you see here, so this is a strawberry runner. So the plant will start to send these shoots out. And what they're, what it's looking for is more ground to spread itself. So if you kind of look at the bottom in here, this little node right here, when that comes in contact with soil, it will produce roots. Actually, you can see there is little roots right there. So if I just kind of redirect this back, this direction would be really gentle. And you can just kind of make sure it has contact with the soil. It'll root right there and create a new little plant start right there. Same with the end down there. It'll just keep doing this. Um, you can clip those off and you can transplant them somewhere else if you want to expand 
the locations of your strawberries. Um, or if you want to share some with friends, you can clip those off and um, yeah, move them around. A lot of people I have seen, here's a runner coming out the side. A lot of people put these strawberry plants in their green stocks and I haven't done that yet. It's a pretty cool idea because then you don't have the strawberries themselves sitting on soil and it seems to be a much cleaner um, situation. I do kind of like them in the box because I feel like they're, they produce more when they have room to spread like this, but uh, I'm still new to the green stocks, so I'm going to experiment with that at some point as well. Okay, right next to that, we have peppers. So this is kind of a strange pepper situation this year. We did store by a couple of our peppers. So this one is a jalapeno. It has the wind knocked over a little bit. I'm going to string this up. I'm not going to mess with it right now. We do have jalapenos coming on it. This is a serrano pepper. I've never used serrano peppers. I don't even know much about them, but they're probably fine in like salsa, which is what I'm probably going to use most of the peppers for. I do like jalapeno poppers and things like that. I'm the only one that eats hot peppers in my family, so we'll see how many I can eat. Oh, I also like to do like a candied jalapeno. Those are absolutely delicious. And then we have bell peppers, which... Um, I don't remember if we, did we have to buy any bell peppers? Well, we did start bell peppers in, indoors. So a couple of these are what we started indoors. A couple of them may have been purchased. I don't recall. But peppers are so tricky because they're really finicky when it comes to germination and then transplanting. I just, I don't know. We haven't had the greatest luck with like fully ripening our bell peppers. I have already picked some off of this one. It looks like we have a couple little babies in here. But because I don't know what color this one is, I don't know what color it's supposed to turn. And when it's fully ripened, it'll turn the color it's supposed to be for that variety. I don't know. I often pick them when they're just green peppers because they're still just as tasty. So we have those bigger ones down there. These ones are a little smaller. And then we have one that just like shriveled up. Like why? I don't understand like what happened. Like this one's just totally done for. Bye bye little guy. So... Sometimes that happens, which is really sad and unfortunate. There was a couple more in here. Clearly, they're just gone. But it happens. That's part of gardening. Aspen, what are you doing? Are you climbing in the watermelon? So right here we have some watermelon. I don't recall the exact variety. Maybe a sugar baby watermelon. It's doing really well. The watermelon leaves are so neat to me. They're so pretty and variegated. I just think they're so cool. But we try to get all of our like melons and squashes to, to, we train them to go in certain directions. So I did want to put these on a trellis of some sort. I have not done that yet. I still may or may not. They are right next to our cantaloupe, which I did also want to put on a trellis and I have not done. If I do that still, what I plan to do is put a trellis, an arch trellis, over here. And then as they climb up, I will, um, which you've probably seen in other garden videos, is I will put a netting around the fruit itself. And as they ripen, they will um, be supported by this netting so that they don't fall to their demise. <laughs> and um, you can, um, yeah, basically save your fruit from pests and all that kind of stuff and she's picking watermelon leaves hey you i want to keep those watermelon leaves can we keep those yeah i want to keep those leaves yeah i want to keep those can you pick up some weeds maybe let's leave the watermelons alone what do they do to you it's okay <laughs> so yeah so i plan on still doing that at some point these are just kind of starting to send out their shoots so hopefully I still have some time in the next week to get that trellis up to hopefully get them to train upward. Right next to those I do have a trellis wall here so we have this wall made of a cattle panel and t-posts and we have this thing growing on it and I'm gonna be 100% honest I have no idea what it is but it is huge. We didn't plant it this year it is something that reseeded itself from last year and it is so incredibly big. I mean, look at the vining that we have right here. And I mean, it looks like a cucumber or a squash of some sort, 
but it has not produced any flowers. It has all these and tons of these like spindlies that are grabbing onto things, but I don't know what it is. There's no fruit on it yet, but it's huge. This is one plant, one plant, and it is taking up like a, like a six by six square foot area and it's going upward and it's running out of room upward. Like, what is this? If you have any ideas, <laughs> let me know. Because <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I we thought that it was something good because, I mean, it looks like a cucumber or a squash of some sort. So we'll find out, I guess. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's some strange weed. Okay, so we have our zucchini here. And we have some beautiful zucchinis happening. So incredibly cool. So we have harvested one so far, and once they start, these guys are heavy producers. So I'm really excited to be able to start making some zucchini stuff again. We grill zucchini like just on the charcoal grill. We also like to, I like to make zucchini bread with it and pickled zucchini. It's a nice versatile vegetable. At the end, of the zucchini here. I do have another sunflower because, well, why not? I don't know. It's all really close, but it's okay. Again, over here, another sunflower on the end here, as well as this is going to be butternut squash. Mm. And we have them, tra I'm trying to train them to come mm. in the center of this little mm. aisle here so that it doesn't come on the grass as much. As soon as they start sending out their shoots, they grab onto everything. So we're trying to tra tra train them. We're trying to train them to come on the center of this spot here. So I'll come from this side. There's some there's spaghetti squash in here as well. So you can kind of see there's that crazy plant, the zucchini. And then we have the spaghetti and the butternut squashes over here. And then we have couple more cucumbers. These are going to be muncher cucumbers and I think unique trellises are kind of fun. So I'm going to try, I'm trying to train this one to go up this old ladder and this ladder is definitely not functional. It is really rickety and old and I'm hoping that it'll start trailing upward. I think I can make that happen. We have another box over here. So we have a ton of cucumbers in different areas because we, my husband loves to make pickles. So we have pickling cucumbers as well as the munchers. Munchers are great for our kiddos to eat. They love to eat them fresh. And then we do the picklers so that my husband can pickle. And we've, all, we've been selling our pickles and people just really love them. So we're just going to keep growing them. And we're going to try to... We are trying to get this one to trellis up as well, which it has grabbed on here. We just have a fencing grabbing it. It's just some, I don't know what kind of fencing this is, garden fencing. It's not green though. And then, so we probably have a couple plants down here. I don't know, there's probably like four plants in here. And then again, on the sides, we have a sunflower. And same with right here, there's a sunflower. I just think these sunflowers are going to be so great. We'll find out. Okay, and then this is where, so this was our rhubarb. It's, well, it's super weeded, right? <laughs> There's tons of weeds in there right now. And it bolted before I could harvest it. And I don't know much about harvesting rhubarb after it has bolted. So I cut the, um, the, those flowers off. I'd cut those off. And I don't know if I should just trim these all back at this point or what. Uh, I'm in Minnesota. I know this is a cold weather crop that needs a cold frost over the winter. I just don't know if I should be clipping it after it's bolted or what to do with this. So, yeah, I mean, I cut off. So this is where it had flowered. I'd cut that off a couple months ago. And I mean, we do have some new, I do have some new growth down here. So should I be cutting these off? Oh, I just, sorry, some of these are weeds in here. But I'm just wondering if I should be cutting off these big stalks 
even if I'm not using them because they're not ripe anymore. Maybe somebody can give me some insight on that. That's something I'm not super familiar with. Okay, right next to that, here we have raspberries, which we have been able to harvest so many raspberries from this this year. And it's only been like a week or two. So I'm going to go on the other side and see if I can get a better angle for you. Because these are seriously, we planted, I think there's like 10 plants or so in here. And they have just taken off and we just planted them last year so we have look at all these berries that are in here those are all gonna ripen so beautiful and that one's that one's ready to go so these are just so beautiful so maybe we should just pull one off right here maybe we should just taste this one because it just pulls off so easily look at that i'm gonna eat it oh mm. oh mm. yeah so good mm. You can't go wrong with fresh raspberries. Seriously. So stinking yummy. Oh, yum. I want more. Alright, we'll have to harvest those in a little bit. Here we have our sad little blueberry patch. Um, There is like five plants in here of blueberries, so I'll get a little close. Here's some blueberries. We do have some berries on there. They have set some fruit. They're not ripe yet, and we definitely have to reweed this area. It's there's a lot of like dandelion coming through again, but we have those. And this is a little experiment. So this property that we have here has a ton of uh, wildflowers as well as wild strawberry. So I took one of the wild strawberry. Again, can you see around the weeds? I took this wild strawberry and I planted it here to see what it would do. If it would actually produce fruit and it has and I was gonna see if I could find one for you the wild strawberry is like an, it's a totally like it really is a sweeter flavor than like a traditional like alpine strawberry or the strawberries that we get at store it just has a different flavor and it's so sweet and it did provide fruit they're really little but they're delicious so I must have grabbed all these ones on this one but these also will send out runners which is why we have them all over our yard and these will root in the ground. Yeah, that's a, these will root at every one of these little nodes. And you can get those to spread. So if you want strawberries, you really only need a couple plants to really get something great going because they send out those runners. Alright, so on the back side of the berry area, we have our potatoes. This year, uh, we do have um, two different varieties. Now... I wanted to grow sweet potato this year, but we didn't get around to it. We do have, I believe these are going to be a basic russet potato. Or maybe they're a yellow or Yukon gold. I'm not sure. Hey, hubby. What? Are these russet or Yukon gold? Yeah. Uh, I think those are Yukon gold potatoes. Okay. And... <laughs> That's true. That is true. And those are baby reds? <laughs> Any kind of potato. <laughs> I know, they do. I was looking at that. Yeah, these need to be weeded really bad. They need some attention, but they are looking awesome. So all these plants are still nice and green, which means they're definitely not ready to be harvested. We have a lot of beautiful flowers on them. So... Yeah, I'll get close on one of the flowers here. They are really such a beautiful plant. So these ones might like like you said, he loves potatoes. So potatoes are always a staple in our garden. They're great for long-term storage. Any variety. But these are just so beautiful. Here's some little a little bundle of flowers right here. They're just so beautiful. Over here we have sugar pumpkins. We do have these growing in just a slight mound situation with some mulch around it. It's kind of a composty mulch, which is what we use in certain garden areas to just keep the weeds down. Uh, these are looking great. I mean, we have one, probably six plants here and they're looking beautiful. We don't have, we don't seem to have any pests or powdered mildew. 
They are just looking really quite beautiful. I don't have much to say about those except for I love having sugar pumpkins around. They're great for pumpkin bread, pumpkin butter, pumpkin pie, all of the above. And they're just cute. This is our most prized possession. This is our weed garden. No, it's not purposely a weed garden. It's supposed to be sunflowers, but they got drowned out by weeds really fast. But we do have some sunflowers in here <laughs> happening. We just need to come through and fully de-weed around them so that they have life. <laughs> Made the kids little mini garden boxes this year. This is one, this is Junipers, and she currently has two cucumbers in it. She had five cucumbers, she started indoors, they did really awesome, and then I'm just going to go ahead and say that they weren't necessarily hardened off properly and the wind took them out right away. So she reseeded some and she got two that came in really well here. There is some carrots here that she has going. There's a couple here, but today she was asked to come weed her garden and she thinks she may have pulled some out on accident. The carrots are so hard because they, you know, they're just so little. So that's a carrot. That's a weed. That's a weed. So sometimes it's hard to decipher and you don't want to pull out your plant because that's discouraging. And then River has two little garden boxes here. We transplanted two strawberries for him over here and those have been doing really well. Um, he thinks it's kind of cool to come out here and be able to eat off his own little plants. And then he's got a couple sugar snap peas grown here with just some kind of like hodgepodge little trellising systems here. Uh, I just made these boxes out of some old pallets and um well, they're pretty cute but they're free i like free free works i'm all about finding old junk and turning it into something else but here's some beautiful peas here and it's just so cool how peas just they throw out these these little spindle viney attachments they probably have a technical name but and they just attach on i just find that so fascinating to me okay and here's another zinnia i have that same a strange mulch system happening over here with the wool and again I mean this is, might be a better view of it it really keeps the weeds at a minimum there's like two weeds there everything else that's just dirt and it's it's still moist and I haven't watered this in a while so apparently wool is a decent mulch kind of strange but we use that little pump thing for neem oil if we need to that thing is amazing I highly recommend one of those um, a beautiful zinnia. I mean, how do you not just love flowers? Seriously, like, plant something beautiful in your garden because it is so incredibly exciting to see these beautiful flowers come up. This is, I don't know, it was going to be a flower of some sort, and it will be. I just don't know, I don't remember what it is. Same with a couple of these. Some of those are weeds, but I planted those from seed just to see what I could get going in this. And it's just like an old wagon. It's my mother-in-law's wagon. And I wanted to make sure that we did something cool with it. Uh, because my kids broke the wheels off of them. And, you know, these radio flowers, those are, those are collectibles, man. Those things are cool. So I turned it into a planter. My husband drilled holes in the bottom of it. We're going to see if it'll work for some flowers. So we'll see. Maybe by the end of the season, that I can get that to, to bloom. We'll find out. Got to have a chair. You can't have a garden without a chair. We well, can. But, I mean, who doesn't want to sit in their garden and just hang out? Every garden should have a chair. This one, we don't have much shade in our garden, but this one does get some shade from this cool little cherry tree. So I put it there. And this is so exciting. Look at this. We have cherries on our cherry tree. Oh, how All right, that's cool all the time I have is for that? Today, friends. I showed you most of it and I'm sure I'll show you more in the next garden tour I'll probably do in a few weeks as more things bloom and we have more harvest to show you. I will continue to update you on that because garden tours are so fun. And in the winter when everything is all dreary and cold and snowy depending on where you are, what better than a garden tour to keep you uplifted through the winter. So hopefully... I was able to provide something fun for you to watch today. Until the next one, have a blessed day.